Okay, this is our 56th study in the book of Psalms. We continue verse by verse through Psalm 119. And we come today to Psalm 119, verse 76. And we will go through verse 104. Let's pray. Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 119, verse 76. David writes, Let thy steadfast love be ready to comfort me, according to thy word, to thy servant. He says, God, do it according to your word. Do it according to what you said to me. According to thy word. He reminds God of what he said. Sometimes people get irritated when they are reminded of their own words. You know, you said you would do this, but you didn't do it. Or you said, no, no, you got to do it. And sometimes people get upset. But God doesn't. God likes us to remind him. If it is done with respect, of course. You know, when we, when we remind God of something that he has said in his word, it's actually glorifying to him because we show him that we've been listening. Lord, I've been listening to you. I've been paying close attention to what you said. And you said this now, God, I'm, you know, praying in line with what you said. See, that honors God. Shows that you're paying attention. As long, of course, as I said, it is done with respect. 77. He says, Let thy mercy come to me, that I may live, for thy law is my delight. I'm not sure he's talking about living physically and being uh, delivered from all of his troubles. I don't think he's asking for his troubles to be removed, although that would not be wrong. He seems to be asking for God's mercy to comfort and sustain him through the trials. Sometimes God removes them. Sometimes he just gives us grace to get through. Verse 78. Let the godless be put to shame, because they have subverted me with guile. As for me, I will meditate on thy precepts. Bad people were blasting David with lies and deceit. And of course, that didn't make him feel good. That's a horrible position to be in. You know... It is, a, it is a disgusting thing to be lied about. To have your enemies say things about you that simply are not true. And that's what, that's what was happening to David. And it didn't make him feel good. But he's not going to get revenge. Instead, notice what he does. He will concentrate on the Word of God. You know, get that focus on God. Probably not a whole lot he could do about, about it other than that anyway. Verse 79, Let those who fear thee turn to me, that they may know thy testimonies. Well, that would be helpful. See, he's asking for some spiritual fellowship. And that, that's mighty good. Especially when you're being buffeted by the enemy. It's hard for a loner to stay on top of their spiritual game. That's what the Bible says. Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together with other Christians. That's why the Bible says two are better than one. That's why it says it's not good for man to be alone. Verse 80. May my heart be blameless in thy statutes, that I may not be put to shame. What we do on the outside is an outgrowth of what we are on the inside. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What you are on the inside will come out on the outside. And so he says, May my heart be blameless in thy statutes, that I may not be put to shame. If we have a heart for God and love His Word, chances are the direction of our life is going to be holiness. And when we mess up, we're going to confess and get back on track. 81. My soul languishes for thy salvation. I hope in thy word. 
He hoped in God's word. And he longed for salvation. He put his hope in the word of God. And God promises salvation to anyone who will receive it through Jesus Christ. God promises salvation to the faithful. And this man was counting on that promise. And he was counting on it without a bit of doubt in his mind because he knew it was true. Verse 82. My eyes fail with watching for thy promise. I ask, when wilt thou comfort me? His eyes are failing him. He says, watching for thy promise. Now he could have been waiting for God to do something. Could have been searching the scriptures. Waiting to hear from God. Looking for help. Looking for that word that will give him comfort. You know, sometimes God's word zaps us with something that really hits the nail on the head. And that feels good. I mean, it is exactly what you need to hear when you need to hear it. And it knocks you over. But even when the Word of God doesn't do that, it's still doing us good. It is still feeding our soul. 83. For I have become like a wineskin in the smoke, yet I have not forgotten thy statutes. They used to hold, they used to, they used to carry wine and wineskins. You know, like sheepskins or goatskins. They'd sew it up and they'd pour wine in it. They were called bottles. Made out of the leather. And when those leather bottles spent too much time next to a hot fire, it would get dried out, it would crack and become useless. The writer says, I'm, I'm like a smoky wine skin. In other words, the writer feels useless. But he stays with the Word of God. And the lesson for us is this. Our business is to, is to stay close to God. His business is to figure out how He wants to use us. You know, we may feel useless at times. We may feel like we're not doing all that we could at times and we wish we could do more. Our business is to stay close to God. His business is to figure out how He wants to use us. 84. How long must thy servant endure? When wilt thou judge those who persecute me? He reminds God that he is God's servant. He was God's servant. And back in those days, a servant served his master. And the master pretty much took care of everything else. A servant served his master. In turn, the master would take care of him. And if anyone, anyone hurt him, well, the master would get justice for him too. And so David saying, God, I'm your servant. And I'm just wondering how long it's going to be before, you know, you get justice for me. He's looking to God, his master. Complete dependence on the Lord. 85. Godless men have dug pitfalls for me. Men who do not conform to thy law. And we don't know what the pit was for. But I think we can be absolutely sure that it wasn't for anything good. It was godless men who were digging a pit for David. Probably going to be used as a trap and then maybe as a prison. Throw them in there. And they were godless men that were doing this. And of course they thought they were better than David. They thought that they were superior than David, to David. And so they felt that they had a license to do something like this to him. Lesson. If people spent time every day thinking about how Jesus had to suffer and die on the cross for their sins. Maybe they wouldn't think they were so superior to others. Maybe they wouldn't think they were such big shots and maybe they would treat others with more kindness. Maybe they wouldn't be so godless. Verse 86 All thy commandments are sure. They persecute me with falsehood. Help me. David knows that God loves truth. So he is asking for help from his from his enemies who whose lies have caused David a lot of trouble. God loves truth. God hates lies. 
So David says, God, can you help me? Can you deliver for me from these people who are saying all sorts of untrue things about me? You know, at, you know, David is going through hard times, but because he is good and because bad people are the ones doing bad things to him, he knows that at least he's on God's side. When we are good, we are on God's side. And our enemies are his enemies. And we can count on his help. And so David prays for it. 87. They have almost made an end of me on earth, but I have not forsaken thy precepts. He would not forsake the law of God. He would not disobey God in order to make friends with his enemies. They have almost made an end of me, but I'm not going to forsake your word. And I suppose, you know, he could have made those enemies of his his friends if he would have just compromised, but he wouldn't do it. He would not sell God out to keep his enemies from hurting him. David was not that important to himself. 88. In thy steadfast love spare my life, that I may keep the testimonies of thy mouth. In other words, revive me so that I can obey you, God. Notice what he says. In thy steadfast love spare my life. Whoops, I went too far. Verse 88. Yeah. In thy steadfast love spare my life, that I may keep the testimonies of thy mouth. He's saying, revive me so I can obey you, God. Obedience is a choice. And yet, it is also a grace from God. Because apart from God, we could not obey. Apart from God, we could do nothing. If God doesn't revive us, by His grace, we can't do what is right. Any good works that we do are by God's grace. And so He says, revive me. So I can keep your testimonies. Help me, God, by your grace, so that I can obey you. It still is a choice on our part because God does not violate our free will. But still, we can't make the right choice apart from God's grace. 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is firmly fixed in the heavens. What God says is true is true. And it stays true permanently. Heaven and earth pass away. But God's worth, God's word, I should say, outlasts it all. It never goes away. Verse 90. Thy faithfulness endures to all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it stands fast. I just love thinking of these verses that teach that God made the universe, and God controls it all. It's just, there's nothing more powerful than that, in my mind. He made the universe. And He controls it. And it obeys. I used to have a dog. Rocky. Good dog. Obedient. I had him trained. I'd say, Rocky, sit. And stay. And he'd sit. And he'd stay. And I even I even put a piece of meat on his long nose. Balance it. And I say, don't, don't take it. You sit, you stay, don't you take it. And he wouldn't. He'd just stare at me. And I'd say, okay, take it. And he would take it. But not until I told him. That's how God is with the earth. And with the planets and with the entire universe. He made them and he told them to sit and stay. Stay exactly where I want you to stay. And they have. It's great. What a powerful God. He says, Thy faithfulness endures to all generations. Thou hast established the earth and it stands fast. 
by thy appointment they stand this day for all things are thy servants you know why the earth and the planets and the entire universe is standing today exactly where they, where, where they are is because they submit to God the earth is still here because it does the will of God now some people are all shook up they're afraid of an asteroid hitting the earth and killing us all or maybe throwing the earth out of its orbit listen if God wasn't in control of this earth and if the entire universe did not serve him then I guess I'd be afraid also but he is in control of these things he's in control of the things that we have no control of I hope we don't go spend multiplied trillions of dollars trying to come up with a laser gun that'll blow apart a asteroid unless we find some other use for it we're just a lot better off praying to God since he can steer it if it happens to be coming our way 92 if thy law had not been my delight I should have perished in my affliction he knew he was in God's hands from reading scripture we can learn that God holds the keys of death and that is what David understood God holds the keys of death and that's why we can be assured that we're not going to die before his time 93 I will never forget thy precepts for by them thou hast given me life he's never going to forget God's precepts because they've been such a blessing to him he's not going to quit reading God's word he's not going to quit following God's word gives him life gives him too much joy to quit he wouldn't do that to God and he wouldn't do that to himself either why 94 I am thine save me for I have sought thy precepts he has tried to obey God which shows that his heart is in the right place because you know at least he has tried that's what he wants and because of that he asks God to save him God you know my heart it's in the right place I want to please you so save me you know that's what God is looking for people who go to hell will know that they deserve hell because they will know that they didn't care about pleasing God God's not going to send anybody to hell who cares about pleasing them. 25, or 95. The wicked lie in wait to destroy me, but I consider thy testimonies. The wicked want to hurt David. But while they plan his murder, he just continues to think about the word of God. You know, there's only so much you can do. There's only so much that God's people can do to protect themselves eventually we just have to focus on God and his promises of everlasting life and trust that what happens is in his will you know, eventually you run out of things that you can do 96 I have seen a limit to all perfection but thy commandment is exceedingly broad he loves God and he wants to obey God but he isn't perfect and he admits it he says that he has seen a limit to all perfection and that would include his, include his own no one and nothing on earth is perfect except for the word of God it is perfect and it shows the way to perfection and if we aren't perfect it's not because God hasn't showed us the way or given us the Holy Spirit that enables us to be obedient it's because we have chosen to walk in our sin nature instead of in the Spirit of God 97 oh how I love thy law it is my meditation all the day he thought about the Word of God all day long it's my meditation all day the Word of God ought to be somewhere in the back of our minds all the time. 
We ought to be so full of God's Word that it's there, guiding our steps. It ought to be our guide as we do our daily work, as we speak, as we make decisions. It ought to be right there in the back of our mind. God's Word should direct us all day, no matter what we are doing. It should be directing us. 98. Thy commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. Now, his enemies may have been smart. They may have been intelligent. They may have been very well educated. But he knew the word of God more than them, so he was further along. In wisdom he was. Maybe not in calculus or astronomy, but in wisdom. The word of God is very practical. It is the perfect guide. And when there is a problem, God's word shows us how to respond to it. Christians whose lives are in constant chaos, they are not following the word of God. I'm talking about going from one crazy thing to another. They're not following the word of God. And when a problem arises, they're not following God's way of dealing with it. Because God is not the author of confusion and chaos. I deny. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. Again, he's even further along than his teachers. Teachers can only teach what they've been taught. Teachers have a have a rough job. Especially public school teachers, they are asked to do so much more nowadays than what they used to have to uh, have to do. I won't want that job. And teachers, you know, they're smart. They know a lot of things about a lot of things. But they've only been they, they only know what they've been taught, and often that means what they've learned in textbooks at a liberal college and liberal textbooks. And so they may understand calculus and history and chemistry and all those things but without knowing the 100% pure truth found in God's word they're not going to have the wisdom needed for a good life which honors God and that's the most important thing verse 100 I understand more than the aged for thy, for I keep thy precepts now he, he's wiser than his enemies he's smarter than his teachers and he even knows more than the aged you know, a person ought to get wiser with age, but that doesn't always happen. You and I both know some young people who read the Word of God really understand the Scriptures, are further along in the area of wisdom than others who are senior citizens, simply because the senior citizens don't care about the Word of God, don't know the first thing about the Word of God, and don't care that they don't know the first thing about the Word of God. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep thy word. This is an extremely important verse. I say that all the time. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep thy word. We must use our free will to turn away from evil. He held back his feet. He chose of his own free will. Now, we saw earlier, we can't do anything apart from the grace of God. It is God who empowers us. It is God who works in us both to will and to do His good pleasure. And yet, you can't throw away the scriptures that teach free will. They are all over from Genesis to Revelation. We must use our free will to turn away from evil. Very important, because if we don't master ourselves then sin will master us. 102. I do not turn aside from thy ordinances, for thou hast taught me. I can't imagine being face to face with the Son of God and hearing Him say, do this, but don't do that. And then turning my back on Him and say, forget it. I can't imagine doing that. 
And yet people find it easy to ignore what the Word of God says. Because they don't like what it says. Or they don't want to accept what it says. They want to believe something else. See, people do the same thing. Ignore what the Word of God says. Even though that also is God speaking to us. And to ignore what it says is to turn your back on God and say, forget it. It's the exact same thing. We can't afford to do that. Psalm 103 and 104. How sweet are thy words to my taste. Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. What your favorite food does for your taste buds, the Word of God would do for your soul. It is very satisfying to prayerfully read God's Word until you know that He is saying something personally to you. Boy, that feels good. That is so enjoyable. 